The wind howled outside, rattling the windows of the old cabin. I shivered as I stoked the dying fire in the hearth, the flickering flames casting eerie shadows on the wooden walls. I adventured deep into the forest, seeking solace in isolation, but now I couldn't shake the feeling that I was not alone. I had always been drawn to the unknown, the stories of restless spirits and malevolent forces that lurked in the darkness. It was this fascination that had led me to this desolate cabin far away from civilization. As the fire crackled and popped, I tried to convince myself that my unease was just a result of my overactive imagination. But the feeling of being watched persisted, a heavy weight pressing down on me. I glanced around the cabin, my eyes searching for any sign of movement, any hint of the source of my unease. I picked up my journal and pen, hoping that the act of writing would distract me from my growing anxiety. The scratching of the pen on paper was a comfort, a reminder of the tangible world around me. But as I wrote, the words seemed to take on a life of their own, forming sentences that I hadn't intended to write. The trees whisper secrets to those who listen. The words appeared on the page, my hand moving of its own accord. I stared at the sentence, a chill running down my spine. I had not written those words. Panic clawed at my chest as I realized that something was very wrong. I threw the journal aside, my heart racing. I stood up and stumbled toward the window, peering out into the darkness. The moonlight cast an eerie glow on the trees, their twisted branches reaching out like skeletal fingers. And then I saw it, a figure standing among the trees, its eyes gleaming like two points of burning coal. I blinked, convinced that it was just a trick of the light. But when I looked again, the figure was gone. My breath caught in my throat as I realized that the presence I had felt was not my imagination. It was real, and it was out there, watching me. I backed away from the window, my mind racing. I needed to leave, to get as far away from this cabin as possible. But as I turned toward the door, a cold breeze swept through the room, extinguishing the fire. Darkness enveloped the cabin, and I was plunged into an inky blackness. Panic welled up inside me as I fumbled for a flashlight, my trembling fingers finally finding it on a nearby table. I clicked it on, the weak beam of light revealing the cabin's interior. But it was what the light didn't reveal that terrified me the most. The windows were no longer there. The walls of the cabin seemed to stretch into an endless abyss, the boundaries of reality warping and shifting. I stumbled back, my mind struggling to comprehend what I was seeing. This couldn't be real. It had to be a nightmare, a hallucination brought on by fear. I pinched myself, hoping to wake up, but the pain was all too real. A low, guttural growl echoed through the cabin, the sound seeming to come from all directions at once. I spun around my flashlight beam cutting through the darkness, and then I saw it, the figure, its eyes burning like hot coals, standing just inches away from me. I screamed, the sound echoing through the distorted space. The figure reached out with long, gnarled fingers, its touch like ice against my skin. I stumbled backward, my heart pounding in my chest. There was nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. As the figure advanced, its form seemed to contort and shift, its features twisting into something both monstrous and familiar. And then with a jolt of recognition, I realized who it was. It was me. Or at least, a twisted, malevolent version of me. You shouldn't have come here. The figure hissed, its voice a distorted mockery of my own. You should have heeded the warnings. I backed away, my mind a whirlwind of terror and confusion. What do you want? I managed to choke out. The figure's grin widened, its teeth jagged and sharp. I want what you wanted, to explore the unknown, to confront your fears. But you were foolish to think you could do so without consequence. With each word, the cabin seemed to shrink, the walls closing in around me. And then, suddenly, it stopped. I opened my eyes, finding myself standing alone in the cabin. The walls were no longer distorted, the figure nowhere to be seen. The windows were back and the moonlight spilled in, casting a soft glow on the floor. Had it all been a hallucination, a trick of the mind? I looked out into the forest, searching for any sign of the figure, but there was nothing. Trembling, I sank to the floor, my mind reeling from the experience. As I sat there in the quiet cabin, I couldn't shake the feeling that the darkness was still out there, waiting, watching. And I knew that I could never truly escape it. That the horrors of the unknown were not just stories, but a very real and malevolent force that I had foolishly unleashed.